Hey guys, welcome back to a video. It is the beginning of December and I'm in a control and shift t-shirt. It's very mild today, which is completely unusual in the UK. I'm just gonna do a simple update video on my M2. It has AC Schitzer lowering springs. I think they're 20 millimeter front and rear. Uh, we've got 10 millimeter spacers front and rear. So you can see it just sits perfectly and I got all of that done at Motec Performance. Uh, we've got the standard wheels back on now with Michelin Supersport tyres. Uh, as I said, it's a bit mild today, so I'm a bit hesitant about putting winters on right now, but I will put them on in the next couple of weeks and certainly before Christmas gets here. Inside the actual brake calipers are some fresh EBC RP1 brake pads, again fitted at Motec. Uh, incredible pads. I've only done about 500 miles on them, but they're amazing, and I'm dying to get them out on track. In the middle of the wheels, you'll see, or you might not see because they're very discreet, they are the new products. They're wheel locks from a company called Rimguard in Sweden. Uh, I'll put all the details below, but they basically are locking wheel devices. As you can see, they're covering all the wheel nuts. So I've still got the locking wheel nut underneath that, but in order to get to the actual locking wheel nuts, it's virtually impossible unless you've got some real um, industrial drills and saws, etc. in which case you're gonna actually ruin the alloy wheel in the process of trying to get it off. And if you use Achilles 25 in their checkout, you'll get 25 euros off a set of these brilliant rim guards. So they're on all four wheels, obviously. Uh, as we're here, we'll look at these beautiful um, auto ID side blades but yep yeah, bit of carbon fiber in there everything's a bit dirty you have to excuse the car's dirty but as you know i use this car one of the coolest and sexiest things about this car and it's under the bonnet so i do tend to forget about it sometimes not when you're driving but yes the eventuri air intake system absolutely beautiful really complements the carbon strut brace uh, I did have a control and shift sticker on that, but it might have melted off at some point. But as you can see, absolutely stunning. Love, love, love that system. I love the way it looks. I love the way it sounds. And it definitely gives me better pickup because when I've driven a stock one of these back to back, it definitely feels a bit more laggy, the stock car. We've got some control and shift stickers, braking pad on this side. And around the other side, we have got and I've just put this on, I pity the fuel. And you do pity the fuel in this car because it's just so, so thirsty. Again, rear wheels, rim guards in the middle, super sports on the outside. Um, and yeah, I mean, I'm sure most of you agree, it looks awesome. I love it, especially from around this sort of angle. Yes, yes, yes. See the filth, it's just, it looks good when it's clean, but it also looks good when it's dirty. Uh, around the back we've got the fantastic Remus exhaust. Um, this is an axle back system, again fitted by Motec Performance. I mean it sounds as good as you're going to get an S55 sounding. Um, they're not the most sonorous engine on the planet but they're not offensive and at the end of the day it's still unmistakably a straight six. Uh, and actually what you can't see underneath the car, for those of you that watch my channel all the time, there's a mid box delete basically one of the resonators is removed and there's two straight through pipes now which has really opened up the sound in this car we'll start it in a second so you can hear that this is done by jack at royal steering wheels he actually redid it for me a couple of days ago uh, i put it on my instagram a lot of you are asking oh well you know that's no good if your other one only lasted about a year but he did it as a favor um you know i paid for the original one and thanks to a lot of you guys and girls uh he's got a lot of business off the back of that and so he literally messaged me and said joe come and bring it in for a refresh because with these alcantara wheels you are meant to look after them you're meant to clean them every month or so defluff them um there's actually a good video on remove before race where raz goes through how to sort of rejuvenate one of these wheels but i'm quite lazy with things like that absolutely love it got the m stitching on the inside uh we've got the Hockenheim silver ring at the top. This is a fantastic present idea. Uh, 25 pounds posted. Uh, we make literally nothing on these, a couple of quid per bottle if I'm being totally honest, but they're just so cool. So my business partner, Jonathan, gave me this one a couple of days ago. 
if he was a bit smarter, he would have probably made the bottle in something that represents the color of my car, but I won't hold that against him. But otherwise you can see, so you can have pretty much any color bottle, uh, your name and your car with a control and shift logo on there, um, control and shift on the back. I absolutely love it, they're beautiful. I've had one for a few months, in fact for about six months uh, that I've used throughout the summer. Um, they're great for warm and cold drinks. Oh, look, there's a manual gearbox. Yes, manual box. That's what this car's all about. <laughs> As you can probably hear, it's pretty outrageous. That settles down after about 30 seconds, as you'll probably hear in a second. But on the move, it's just epic now, it really is. I absolutely love this car. It is very, very cool. Some of you might notice the long-term M135i behind me. I've actually got that car to the end of January now, uh, and I'm about to take that to somewhere very special. I'm not gonna ruin it, but I'm gonna shoot a really cool video with that. So more content on that car coming up soon. And in fact, in a couple of days, I'm off to Spain to film the BMW M8. So lots of BMW content coming up. Okay guys, you join me on a decent bit of road. Before I start this driving bit, I really wanna actually uh, talk about what's happening out in Australia. Um, I'm half Australian for those of you who don't know um, and they're having some really horrific uh, bushfires out there at the moment sort of uh, anywhere above Sydney really on the east coast and it's it's really bad and we don't really hear too much about it over here it's only when I speak to friends and family at home or home in Australia and I really hope that they, you know, they start getting under control very soon because if they don't, I just, yeah, I dread to think how long it could go on for. So, wishing you all the best uh, to, yeah, everyone out there, really. So, one thing I forgot to talk about, uh, stuff that I've had done to this car, obviously I didn't talk about my P3 gauge that just sits over here, my right vent. Uh, it gives me some really all-important temperatures because with a lot of the F-Series cars, especially the smaller ones, the M135i's, the M140's, and, um, and the M2's, there's just not enough gauges in here really giving you, you know, oil and water temps, etc. cetera. Uh, you can cycle through the menu and get the oil temperature up here, but it's just nice to have it all sitting there. I don't tend to use it all the time, but this time of year, it's really good to see when everything's up to temperature on cold days and also when you're really pushing on on you know places like petrolhead tours you can just keep an eye on things um cars are very clever these days they've got lots of fail safe features in them so if they do start getting way too hot or you know i don't know you, you lose um your coolant or you know you're, you're dropping oil or whatever the engine will uh, you know go into a safe mode uh, and it should give you plenty of warnings, but it is nice just to see that all there. It also gives me things like 0 to 60 times and stuff that I used a couple of times when it was new in my M140 originally, um, but I haven't really used for the past year or so. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I'm sure some of you might find that amusing. In terms of the cabin in this car, well, yeah, I just absolutely love this car. I've just come back from somewhere driving something very powerful that I can't talk about and uh, that something had about 600 horsepower and it's always you know a bit hmm, worrying when I'm on these amazing launches or I'm driving these ridiculously powerful cars because I always think oh, I'm gonna jump back in my M2 and it's gonna feel a little bit underpowered but it never ever does it feels a lot faster than it is and that's mostly to do with the gearbox a slightly overly stiff ride but it all gives enjoyment at the end of the day and that's what you want in a road car. You want something that you can drive up to sort of the speed limit and still have lots of fun in. It just feels great and this time of year, okay, it's not particularly cold today, it's actually 10 degrees as I talked about when I was outside the car, which is very unusual for first week in December. It means I've got, you know, reasonable tire temps. In fact, they're all up around the sort of high 20s, so the rubber's not too hard. 
and as I talked about earlier on, it's it's I don't really feel the urge to put my winters on yet, but in three days time it could be zero degrees, in which case I should definitely have my winters on. So yeah, as you can see, these roads are pretty horrendous. <laughs> Brilliant roads, but horrendous uh, conditions or yeah, finish on the road all over the place. Um, I do wonder who lays some of these roads, you know, whether they sort of maybe need to go to spec savers, I don't know. This is 20% throttle, second. I mean, how good does that sound? Now the road's so bumpy and this car's so stiff that it looks like I'm doing a thousand miles an hour, but I'm actually not. Oh, it's just, this is what I love this car for. It's just so good at B-road bashing. It's just so much fun, you know? It always puts a smile on my face. It's just so composed through sections like this. It's just lovely, nice damp road. It's just talking to me, oh, my new wheel as well. It feels so good with the fresh Alcantara on it. It really is. I know a couple of people don't like Alcantara, including legends like Chris Harris, but I really, really do like it especially when it's when it's clean or or new like this one um, and when I go on track days and stuff you wear a good set of gloves and you just get so much purchase on the wheel I absolutely love them but yeah this car being manual it just gives me the most satisfaction ever love touching a knob it just makes it very organic you know it's it's just it's just great i watched henry catchpole's car friction 911 manual video which i'm sure most of you've seen probably the best car video on the internet uh certainly best one in the last couple of years um it's only six or so minutes but he just talks about the manual gearbox in a gt3 i think he has at the time 991.2 and it's just so true and i think in fact it was that video that really swayed me to go manual with this car. I was thinking about it. Um, you never know with BMW gearboxes though, because I've had some, the one in my M135 wasn't great, but this one, this one's just brilliant, it really is. Oh. And now this car's got some sound. I mean, it makes such a difference, it really does. Oh. just such a satisfying car to take out for a drive and that's why I've gone for the manual I just love getting in this car it's it's very old school in certain aspects you know I've still got my analog dials in front of me which I absolutely love yes they're LED backlit but essentially they're analog you know they're mechanical dials I, I've got uh, dials and buttons down here where my climate control is. I've got iDrive 6 which is as good as anyone else makes you know infotainment systems and yeah the cabin in here is a little bit old school BMW and it's nothing too flash or special. The leather and the seats I wish it wasn't the Dakota and I wish that they hadn't put the Alcatar on the outside of the seats. I wish they put it on the inside which I see they've done on like cars like the M8. Um, just to give you some grip because I don't think the seats are that great. They're okay, but they're not amazing um, But you know this car is far from perfect But it's kind of what makes it so good in a way. It's it's imperfections make it make it fantastic and make it exciting uh, a lot of people ask me, you know, why did you get this and not Cayman or I don't know a TTRS or the Alpine, like Tony's fantastic Alpine. And my main answer to most of those questions is, well, there's a couple really, but number one, I'm a BMW fanboy, but obviously if someone else makes a car that is genuinely better than this, then I would consider it, look at it. Um, but they all, all those cars I just mentioned, oh, this road, yeah, they're all two-seaters. 
Um, and I love having four seats in here because occasionally I'll have three or four people in here and any of those cars, I just wouldn't have that option. So yeah, I need that. Also the big boots, uh, you know, with the seats folded down, I can chuck two mountain bikes in here. So two of us can take two mountain bikes away and lots of luggage. So it's the usability and the practicality <laughs> of this car. Just fantastic! I love this car. Anyway, yeah, practicality, whatever. Um, I'm gonna end this video now. It's a very random video, I know, but I just fancied shooting something today. I was coming out on a bit of a trip, going to see a friend, and I wanted to shoot something. So, guys, please give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this random video. Uh, please remember to check out Control and Shift, and you know, buy your loved one something. Uh, or give your loved one a hint as to something you might want on there, especially things like that water bottle that I showed you at the beginning of the video, um, or whatever, just uh, all the support I can get at the moment um, helps towards the channel and, uh, and us building Control and Shift as a brand. But so far the support's been amazing and I just can't thank everyone enough. It's just been incredible. Um, yeah, lots more exciting videos to come. We've got M8 competition uh, coming up in the next week or so uh, and then after that we've got Audi RS Q8 I've also as I said at the beginning of the video I've got um, some cool content coming on uh, the M135i so keep an eye out for that and uh, yeah make sure you follow me on Instagram because obviously I do lots of daily stuff Instagram stories and stuff um, so it's quite a good way of keep an eye on what I do day to day but obviously I only put the good bits on there like with any social media so don't think that my life revolves around going on these amazing press trips because although I've been on a few recently I am up till 2 3 in the morning sometimes working in my regular job so uh, yeah I do work my ass off to provide content for everyone anyway thanks for watching I will speak to you soon